This is a CJASN podcast, and I'm Søren Viborg Vestergaard from the Department of Clinical Epidemiology at Aarhus University in Denmark. I will present a study where me and my colleagues explored six different ways of identifying CKD patients in registry data. Previous studies used different ways when defining CKD, such as a single low EGFR or the CADIGO definition of two low EGFRs at least 90 days apart. But can we even compare the incidence, prevalence and prognosis of CKD from studies that define CKD differently? From previous studies, we selected six different definitions of CKD. Five were based on laboratory data using EGFR and urine albumin creatinine ratios. And the sixth was based on hospital diagnosis consistent with CKD. We used population-based hospital and laboratory data of all adults in northern Denmark during 2009-16 to to test these different algorithms. We found that according to the most sensitive lab-based definition, more than 8% of the adult population had CKD, whereas less than 5% had CKD according to the most restrictive lab-based definition. Also, when identified with CKD, the time since the first low EGFR was up to several years when requiring more than one low EGFR test, which potentially reflects a delay in diagnosis. However, the one-year mortality and risk of maintenance dialysis were comparable across the lab-based cohorts. Finally, we found it important to exclude EGFR tests taken during hospital admissions or in emergency rooms when identifying CKD to avoid inclusion of patients with potential acute kidney injury. In comparison, hospital diagnosed CKD was far less frequent, thus estimating lower prevalence and incidence of CKD. And these patients had much longer history of impaired kidney function and a worse prognosis. Which definition should we then use, you may ask? Well, our study cannot propose one-size-fits-all. Which definition is the most appropriate when defining CKD depends on the study question. Is it more important to include every person with potential CKD from the first day with a low EGFR, or is it more important to include only patients who certainly have persistently impaired kidney function? Our findings can help researchers make an appropriate choice and help readers interpret findings in CKD studies. Thank you for listening to this short presentation. I hope that you'll read our paper too. And I promise there's good stuff beyond the abstract. This podcast is copyrighted by the American Society of Nephrology. All rights reserved. All content in this podcast is for informational purposes only and is not intended to be medical advice. This podcast should not be used in a medical emergency or for the diagnosis or treatment of any medical condition. Please consult your doctor or other qualified healthcare provider if you have any questions about any medical condition or before taking any drug, changing your diet, or commencing or discontinuing any course of treatment. Thank you for listening to this podcast from the American Society of Nephrology.